Good morning. Welcome to First Baptist Church. It is a wonderful day to gather in the house of the Lord for worship, uh, as well as, as with a special emphasis on prayer today. If you have looked in your bulletins, you will see we have a wonderful worship service prepared today, all centered around prayer. Uh, if you're visiting with us, we would like to extend a special welcome to you. We are so glad to have you. Um, we are glad that you have joined us this morning. And if you would like to know more about our church, we would ask that you would fill out a visitor's card located in your pews, and it is entitled, I Want to Know More. And check off those areas um, that you would like us to follow up with you in the days ahead, and we certainly look forward to doing so. If you would place those cards in the offering plate as, the, as they are passed later on in the service, um, and we will certainly look forward to following up with you in the days ahead. Before we get to a couple of announcements this morning, let us stand and greet one another. With our special emphasis being on prayer today, I do want to remind you that our sanctuary is going to be open this afternoon from 1 to 5 p.m. Um, for a time for you to come and just have some personal meditation and prayer time with God. And uh, we hope you will take advantage of that. This morning in our service, we are going to be going through the many different types of prayer that we find in Scripture. And uh, we hope those will inspire you, and we hope you will take advantage of that time to spend some personal time with God here in our sanctuary today from 1 to 5. I do want to remind our youth and adult handbells that uh, rehearsal is today at 4.30, youth choir rehearsal at 5.15, and our middle school and high school youth are preparing for Youth Sunday. Um, youth Sunday is going to be next Sunday, April the 14th. Our youth are going to be leading uh, our worship time, and so we hope that you will come out to support them and, and uh, have a wonderful time of worship that they've been working hard on uh, for the last few weeks. Youth, I do want to remind you we have a full rehearsal tonight at 6 o'clock here in the sanctuary, so please be reminded of that. We need all participating youth to, to come and, and to uh, rehearse with us. Again, that's at 6. And then our youth council and youth committee, please remember we have a meeting tonight following that rehearsal at 7 o'clock. So um, several things going on this afternoon. I also want to remind you that this Wednesday we have our regular scheduled Wednesday evening activities and ministries, beginning with our children's music ministries at 4.15, our fellowship meal at 5.45, and prayer service at 6.30, as well as our mission studies for youth and children, also beginning at 6.30. Also coming up, Operation Inasmuch. April the 20th, Saturday, April the 20th. It's coming fast. We hope that you have signed up. There are cards available in the foyer as well as at the church office. Um, if you haven't filled one out, we would ask that you uh, please do so. If you don't get a chance to fill a card out and you would like to participate, we hope you'll just show up. It will be a wonderful time of serving our community in a number of different capacities. There are a number of teams that are serving in a lot of different ways, um, and those are listed on that card. So again, Operation Inasmuch, April the 20th. Um, we have breakfast at 7.30 and then a commissioning at 7.50 for that team. And then we have another breakfast at 8.30. Also, lunch will be served in the fellowship hall from 11 to 2 that Saturday. And breakfast will also be in the fellowship hall. Um, so we hope that you will join us for that special day of serving in Christ's name and uh, plug into where you feel like God is calling you to. Um, and last but not least, 
just uh, speaking of prayer, as a matter of keeping a few families in your prayers this week, we do ask that you keep the family of Miss Annie Pearl Hardy in your prayers, uh, the family of Mr. Bill Thorne, uh, Danny Thorne's father, as well as the family of Danny Grice. Um, we ask that you would keep those families in your prayer in the coming days as they continue to grieve and mourn their loss. Those are all of the announcements we have this morning. Um, let's prepare for worship. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Let us pray. O oh Lord, as we enter this time of worship, may our songs of worship, our words, our thoughts, our prayers, Rise up to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun. May we come before you with openness and honesty, praising you for our blessings and seeking inner strength and patience in our troubles. May this time of worship remind us of your eternal presence and help us continue to learn the importance of prayer. Communicating with you, talking, seeking, asking, searching, and most importantly, listening. Lord, we humbly ask for you to bless our time together today as we worship you. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Will you turn with me to our prayer of praise printed in your bulletin, Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty firmament. Praise Him for His mighty deeds. Praise Him according to His surpassing greatness. Praise Him with trumpet sound. Praise Him with lute and harp. Praise Him with tambourine and dance. Praise Him with strings and pipe. Praise Him with clanging cymbals. Praise Him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
Good morning. I got a question for you today. How do I know who you are? Do you know? Well, as you get older, sometimes people, they, they want to know who you are and you have to prove to them who you are. Well, this, what is this? Anyone know what this is? It's a passport. And see, that passport says that I'm a citizen of the United States of America, and it has my name and how long it's good for. And then if you travel outside, it's stamp, they stamp where you go so that, so that everyone knows that you're a U.S. citizen. Well, here in, here in the States, as you, when you turn 15, you'll get a driver's permit. And then when you turn 16, you'll get a license. And you see, that's got my picture. Not a very good picture, but it's a picture. And then it has who I am and all about my license and my date of birth and all that stuff there. So if someone says, how do I know you're Melvin Ezel? I can say, that card right there says I'm Melvin Ezel. And you say, well, or I can show them the passport. That shows, that shows who I am. You say, well, Mr. Melvin, what does that have to do with church? Well, what happened last Sunday? Last Sunday was Easter Sunday, right? And what do we celebrate? That's right. And Easter is when Jesus arose from the grave, right? Well, the next day after Jesus arose from the grave, he appeared to his disciples. And they saw him and they believed and they knew that he had risen from the grave. But one of the disciples wasn't there at the meeting. You know what his name was? Thomas. You ever heard Doubting Thomas? You ever heard of the phrase Doubting Thomas? Well, Thomas said, well, I tell you, I don't believe it. I'm not going to believe it till I see his hands and I see his side and I can put my hand, put my finger on those wounds in his hand and stick my hand in his side. That's the only way that I'm going to believe that he's Jesus. Well, about eight days later, Jesus appeared again. And he looked at Thomas. He said, Thomas, look. See my hands? Touch my hands. See the scars. Thomas, look at my side. Put your hand there. Feel this. Thomas saw and he believed because Jesus proved to him who he was. But then Jesus says at the end of that, he says, Blessed are those who believe, yet do not see. You say, well, Mr. Melvin, I hadn't seen Jesus. How do I know? Well, I'm going to tell you something. You see this book right here? That's the Bible. The disciples didn't have the New Testament and all the things it told about Jesus. But we do. We know and we can believe that Jesus is who he says he is studying our Bibles, coming to church, and praying to Him, and believing in faith that Jesus is who He says He is. And it tells us right here in the New Testament. Pray with me, okay? Dear Jesus, we thank You for this day. We thank You for appearing to the disciples. And we thank You for appearing to Thomas. Help us to believe in you without having to see you. Help us to read our Bibles and pray to you. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Psalm 51, <clears throat> to the leader, a psalm of David, when Nathan the prophet came unto him after he had gone into Bathsheba. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. 
for I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightst be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to known wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not the Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto them. Deliver me from blood guiltness, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips, my mouth shall shew forth thy praise. For thou desirest not sacrifices, else would I give it. Thou desirest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O God, thou wilt not despise. Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Then thou shalt be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness and burnt offering, and whole burnt offering. Then thou shalt offer bullocks unto thine altar. Please turn to 297. Search me, O God. We will sing stanzas one and three. Paul started the church at Thessalonica on his second missionary journey, and later when he was in Corinth, he wrote these words. I'm reading from 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 1 through 10. To the third, yeah, let's start over here. To the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, grace and peace to you. We always thank God for all of you, mentioning you in our prayers. We continually remember before God, our Father, your work produced by faith, your labor prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. 
For we know, brothers loved by God, that he has chosen you because our gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit, and with deep conviction. You know how we lived among you for your sake. You became imitators of us and of the Lord in spite of severe suffering. You welcomed the message with the joy given by the Holy Spirit. And so you became a model to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. The Lord's message rang out from you, not only in Macedonia and in Achaia. Your faith in God has become known everywhere. Therefore, we do not need to say anything about it. For they themselves report what kind of reception you gave us. They tell us how you turned to God from idols to serving the living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus who rescues us from the coming wrath. Please turn to hymn number 603, My Singing is a Prayer. And as you listen to the organ and choir introduce the first stanza, join us on stanzas two and three. I'm reading from Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 through 14. This is a letter from Paul and Timothy to the people in the city of Coloss. So ever since we first heard about you, we have kept on praying and asking God to help you understand what he wants you to do, asking him to make you wise about spiritual things and asking that the way you live will always please the Lord and honor him so that you will always be doing good, keep things for others, while all the time you are learning to know God better and better. We are praying too that you will be filled with his mighty, glorious strength, so that you can keep going no matter what happens, always full of the joy of the Lord, and always thankful to the Father who has made us fit to share all the wonderful things that belong to those who live in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us out of the darkness and gloom of Satan's kingdom and brought us into the kingdom of his dear son who bought our freedom with his blood and forgave us all of our sins. Lord. Send 
May we pray together the prayer Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Offertory hymn is printed in your bulletin. Prayer is a soul's sincere desire. Would you stand as we sing together? Join me as you will as I pray. I am guilty, Lord, of many things and of not being as good as steward of my gifts and income as I should be. I am guilty, Lord, of not being a good steward of time and life that you have blessed me with. I beseech you, Lord, to forgive me again. Show me how to increase my devotion to you such that I will acknowledge that I have nothing and that which I thought was mine is yours, and I just have use of it. Help me to fully surrender that I am not confused again by what is mine and what is yours. Please allow me to see clearly the opportunity to show a life dedicated to serving you everywhere and all the time. Make clear the paths that I should follow and give me the strength to follow, I beg you. Open my heart and mind that I feel your presence always. I acknowledge, Lord Jesus, that you are the Savior, provider of grace, mercy, and forgiveness to me, and that of all, all of life is in vain without you, and I thank you. Bless our tithes and offerings, that they may render us responsive to our love for you. I praise you, Father, and make my prayer in the name of Jesus and for his sake. Amen.
as you remain standing, I invite you to turn with me to the Gospel of John, to the 17th chapter, and I will be reading verses 1 through 26. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you've sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world but on behalf of those whom you gave me because they are yours all mine are yours and yours are mine and I have been glorified in them and now I am no longer in the world but they are in the world and I am coming to you Holy Father protect them in your name that you've given me so that they may be one as we are one while I was with them I protected them in your name that you have given me I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they did not, do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they also may be sanctified in truth. I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you've given me may be with me where I am to see my glory, which you've given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known, so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. The Word of God for the people of God.
One of the early challenges to Christian faith when it emerged within the larger Roman Empire that had been so dramatically influenced by Greek culture and Greek language was that idea that somehow the things of the spirit and the things of the world or the body were separate in totality. There was a dualism among Greek philosophers that set aside things of the spirit from the things of the flesh. Consequently, we see running through Christian history that element by which spirit and body are separated. And oftentimes it is a, a corrective instruction that we find that we read in scripture that is trying to address those challenges. For instance, uh, we find among some of the churches of Asia Minor that the, the Apostle Paul related to, there was, were groups within congregations that would often say, I can do what I please with my body because I know I have a relationship of the Spirit with God. And the two are separate. And so they did so. They indulged the flesh at every, in every form in total disregard for a spiritual relationship because they believed they were separate. Now that's not Christian doctrine, but it is the Greek influence upon the world at the time that had emerged within the thinking of the people. It was street theology, if you will, born out of Greek mythologies that in turn imposed itself within communities that were divided and broken because of the consequences of such behaviors. So Paul wrote many times addressing those concerns and needs. But what we understand from older Old Testament conceptualization and philosophy if you will was that God has created us in his own image he has placed us in the world as parts of his creation but humankind are blessed with unique capacities for relationship with our heavenly father we are body mind and spirit bound together and anything and everything that affects our bodies also affects our minds and our spirits. We are a unity of personhood created in the image of God. And God has called forth from us a calling to live not schizophrenically subdividing ourselves in some specific compartmentalizing of body, mind, spirit, but he has bound us together in unity for the understanding that we are called to be disciples of Christ, followers of Jesus. We are called to be ambassadors for God in this world, his representatives, living, working, sharing in his name, as people of God, persons of faith, who understand that we are made whole by our God, who by His Spirit guides and leads us, not separate from our bodies, but united in wholeness. Now, when you think about what that means, it means that a lot of what goes on in the name of religion needs to be rethought. Because too much of the time we park our religion at the back door of the church and head out into the world and think that what we're doing now has no bearing upon the Spirit. When it has everything to do with the Spirit. 
For the Spirit of God is not confined to your relationships in the building of a church building. The Spirit of God is not confined to the articulation of your faith that comes forth from your lips when you're singing in the choir or sharing from a Sunday school classroom. The conceptualization of who you are as a follower of Christ goes with you wherever you are. Wherever you go. The Spirit of God is with His people. You are whole in Christ. A whole being. All that you are is accountable to God. All that you are. Your gifts, your time, your talents. Yes, they are God's gifts to you. God's mercies to you. God's grace to you. And we are called to live in relationship to God. So what then is prayer? The best way I can describe prayer is listening to the things that we have already said today and read from Scripture. Prayer is indeed praise. The first psalm that we shared, the 150th psalm. What did it remind us? It reminds us that everything that has breath, everything that has breath has reason to praise. When you think about what prayer accomplishes, it is a conversation with God. It is a conversation in which we are engaged mentally, physically. So many times as children we were taught postures of prayer. Fold your hands, bow your heads. Now, for children that's important because the point was to give our attention to what we were saying and thinking. And sometimes as children our hands got in the way and our eyes got in the way. So we bowed our heads and closed our eyes and we understood that before God we were accountable. We learned to pray. Jesus taught his disciples in the same way. His disciples had asked that you teach us to pray Lord like John taught his disciples. Would you teach us what's the right way? And we prayed the Lord's Prayer today. Luke's gospel shares that prayer. Pray like this, Jesus said. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Acknowledge that you're talking to God when you pray. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Are you urgently, honestly, openly seeking the will of God for your life? Are you seeking the... the, the way of God for your life. You know, there's a real shift in a lot of people's behavior when they honestly want the way of God for their life. It happens. If they honestly are praying for God's way and they are open to God's leading, God will teach them. God will guide them. God will instruct them. God will provide for them. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Understand, yes, you are a human body bound into a relationship with a heavenly Father. And you have human needs. You have needs for food, clothes, shelter. And Jesus taught his disciples about those things. He said, but know that first priority in your life is the kingdom of God, the rule and reign of God in your life. All the things that you need will be added unto you as a consequence of that relationship. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Seek first the way of God for your life, for your blessing, for your benefit, for your having what you need for this physical world in which you live for this physical body in which 
The Spirit dwells. Yes, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Your body. And forgive us our trespasses. Father, forgive us our trespasses. Sin. The fact of it is real. David prayed, saying, Lord, my sin is ever before me. I know. He, he didn't go through the long list in his Psalm 51. He didn't have to. He understood what they were, and God knew what they were. And he confessed that, God, I have sinned against you. I have broken the relationship that I should have with you. That's what sin is all about. It's breaking faith with God. It is breaking faith with God, and in turn, it destroys our lives. It destroys our relationships. Sin has consequences. And the prayer of David was, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. He knew that what was missing, what had gone wrong, was his attitude and his actions. And he felt, he felt the guilt that was a righteous experience, if you will. He asked forgiveness. Cleanse me. Purge me with hyssop. It's interesting he used that terminology. We're not even familiar. Some people don't even know what was hyssop all about. But the high priest used hyssop to take the blood and place it upon the horns of the altar when he went into the Holy of Holies and carried us an offering for sin on behalf of the nation of people every year at Passover. He, he went asking God to forgive. That's what David was asking of God. Lord, purge me from sin. Remove my blood guiltness. By the sacrifice. But then he said, oh God, I know what's on your mind is not the sacrifice of bullocks or the sacrifice of, of animals. That's not what you're really looking for from me because that's not what's needed from me. What's needed from me is a broken and contrite spirit. What's needed from me is an honest, an honest willingness to admit what I have done wrong. Confession. That is a sacrifice that God receives. And yes, from Him forgiveness comes. From God, forgiveness and healing comes. That's one reason why the sanctuary is going to be open today for prayer. We have all kinds of things to pray for. Yes, prayers of confession, but prayers of petition as well. So many of the prayers we shared today from Paul's writings were prayers of thanks and, and recognition of people's faithfulness. But what he prayed too was that God's power might be manifested in the people's lives. He prayed for God's mercy and grace to be upon them as they bore witness to God's truth. Today, are you praying for God's grace and mercy to be shown through your life? Are you praying for that? Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Are we recognizing that the two are bound together we are to be forgiving people because God has forgiven us. That our sins are forgiven as we are forgiving. As we understand that we too are sinners in need of grace.
when we think about prayer, we have so much, so often understood that, that we pray. And people use this phrase. They say, they say, I feel like my prayers haven't gone past the ceiling. Have you heard that? It's almost a, almost a, a flippant sort of, uh, I don't want to say famous quote that people use about what they feel like is prayer uh, ineffectiveness. How do you describe an ineffective prayer? Oh, it just doesn't go past the ceiling. Well, did you know that God hears every prayer? Now, the psalmist used to say, uh, you know, some folks' prayers won't be, won't be heard. But that was a very human attitude. God hears every prayer. Now, maybe God's prayer will, uh, the conversation you're having with God doesn't go very far because you're really not having a conversation with God. Maybe because you're just not wanting to talk to God. (coughs) Maybe your prayer doesn't go past the ceiling because you're not paying attention to who you're praying to. Maybe your prayer doesn't go past the ceiling because you don't have a mind to offer yourself to God's way. You're still all bound up in your way. But praying to God is openness to God. It is listening for God. Listening to God. It's not easy, I reckon, because we understand that when we listen to God, what shines is the light of God upon our lives. And the light of God shining upon our lives causes some things to be seen for what they are. And the things that aren't good in our lives that the light of God shines on, when we see that, know that, you know what it means? It means we've got to do something. We either have to be different human beings because of what God has shown us or we have to be sinners who keep on sinning willfully and boldly refusing the way of God and what we like even better is just to pretend it's not important and that's just what it is it's pretending And Jesus said, for those, it's more dangerous than ever. Because they just don't don't care about what that means for their future. In the book of Revelation, it says, I would that you were hot or cold, not lukewarm. I would that you knew where you stood before God. With Him or without Him, but know where you are. There's no middle ground. Jesus prayed for His disciples in this 17th chapter of John. He prayed for us. He prayed for for you and I that would hear the words that the disciples would share with this generation about our Savior. And he prayed that we might be one. That we might be one. One. We look at each other and we think about how do so many diverse, different, people from so many different paths of life, so many different experiences, how do we become one? We become one under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. We become one in the power of God's love. We become one in the knowledge that He is our Savior and Lord. We become one because we understand that it is Christ in us that makes the difference. Now today you may be trying to split your spiritual life apart from your physical life, your world, your world in which you live. You might put the spirit far above the plane of relationship. You'd like God to be above and beyond you so you don't have to relate to him so much. But this is a God 
who has come to us in Christ. This is the God who has entered into time and place in history. Yes, our time, our place, our history. This is a God who has sent his son to be the sacrifice for our sins. Yes, by whose stripes we are healed, by whose blood we are forgiven, by whose grace we are saved. This is the Christ who has come, and in his name we have salvation and hope. That is where the oneness that Jesus prayed we might know comes from. Yes, he would come to be with us. He prayed that we might be one. There's a word that I associate with that when I think about this Christian body, the body of believers, the church being one. And the word I think of is community. The last half of that word is unity. Community finds its unity in its relationship with God. A spiritual community, a Christian community, finds its unity in relationship to Christ. Yes, when we break bread at the Lord's table we sometimes call it communion that's the first part of community we break bread together in the name of Jesus the Christ we live in relationship to him yes community at its best Christian community at its highest is born in Christ it is sustained in Christ And it is what we live in Christ daily. Body, mind, and spirit together. We are to be whole men and women of faith. Whole in a relationship bound to Christ our Lord. Today, when you pray, Pray to the God who has come to you. Pray to the God who has come to be with you. Pray to the God who understands your physical needs in every form. Pray to the God who seeks your blessing and your presence with Him in glory. Pray to the God who brings his glory to you to experience and to share. Pray. Talk to God today. Talk to God, but listen as well. Have a conversation. Spend time in prayer. Talking to the one who loves you more than anyone else has ever loved you. May we pray. Father, hear our prayer. And may we hear your truth to us. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. As we stand together to sing the hymn of commitment, number 61, I invite you to make decisions for Christ today, to acknowledge him as Lord and Savior, to request baptism and membership in this church, or perhaps to unite with this fellowship from another congregation as God would lead you. You come today in obedience to his voice as we stand together and sing.
Hebrews chapter 13, hear these words. Now may the God of peace who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you complete in everything good so that you may do his will, working among us that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen.